Um, all right, let's get back to this player of the day. It is Elijah Griffin. We talked about Justice Terry last weekend, and I, I, I told you here on the channel, like, when it comes to floors, I don't think there's a higher floor in the 2025 class than Justice Terry. I think he's going to go to college. He's committed to the University of Georgia right now. He's going to go to college, be a two- or three-year starter. He's going to go to the NFL. He's going to be great. Um, I can almost guarantee that right now looking at him. Now, in terms of who has the highest ceiling in the class of 2025, I don't think there's any doubt from a position player standpoint. It's this guy we're going to show you today, which is Elijah Griffin. He is, I think, a consensus top five player in the 2025 class across all three uh, evaluation services. Whoever you trust, I, I don't really care, but I'm telling you, he's a consensus top five player. And here's the craziest thing about Elijah. I don't think he's close to what he's going to be. Okay, if you if you go and see Elijah in person, you will see a six foot three, two hundred eighty ish pound all, a defensive lineman that still looks like he's growing into his body. And I talked about it last week. Still really pointy elbows, still really pointy knees, which tells me, and still really skinny ankles, which I hope maintains. But when you have skinny features in those portions of your body, it tells me that the rest of your muscular stature has not filled out which tells me you still have some ceiling to reach, right? Which means whatever you are now, once we put more weight on you and once we move weight around, you will be a totally different football player, and he's a damn good one right now. So let's go to the board. Got to unmute the microphone. Yes, I am in shorts today. Uh, let's watch the tape. It's 10 and a half minutes. We're not going to watch all 10 minutes. This is Savannah Christian. Uh, Savannah Christian, fun fact. Uh, beat me for a state title game in 2013. It's the last and only time I cried during a game of football. Um, it was not a good experience for your boy. Lost 20 to six. Um, and the guy across from me took every, his name was D'Angelo Brown. He took every single scholarship offer that I had. Okay, Jacksonville State was there that day. North Alabama was there that day. A lot of mid-major schools looking at the old six foot, 285 pound center from a single A school. They never called me again after that, so. But hey, I met my wife and now I live in her basement. So that's awesome. So shouts out to her. Um, let's watch this tape here from Savannah Christian and Elijah Griffin. Uh, also, you should know uh, this dude on the top right here, he might be the best football player I ever evaluate in my entire life. His name's LaDamian Guyton. He's a 14 year old, six foot four, 230 pound edge rusher. He's already got offers from George. Okay. He looks oh, right that's now. That's the guy yeah. you said the picture of during the state title uh -huh. game. That's the guy we came back after the state title game and was like, hey, look at this kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might be the best football player I ever see. Okay. He looks like Adam Anderson right now at 14, but we're here to evaluate the other kid. Okay. And he's right there in that nose tackle. And you're going to see, hey, really, really good feet on the guy. All right. Oh, plays, big man. Yeah. Plays with a really good base oh, at all tiny. times. Huh? Big man Tutty. Big man Tutty to start the to start the show. He obviously had no idea what to do once he got in the zone, but that's okay. How could you expect him to? Um, plays off the ball here. You noticing this? Plays really far off the ball yeah. to get his hands active early in the snap count. Something that I don't believe you're going to have the ability to do on the college level. This long shore he's playing against right there. I love the pad level that he plays with. Always plays with a good low base. Uh, chest is always over the knees and over the toes. It's the opposite of what we want to have as an offensive lineman. I want to play with a good shoulder lean uh, and have the ability to unzip my feet once I get behind the line of scrimmage. Something he's going to have to learn when, when, he gets to the end of, or when he gets to the next level is how to unzip our feet and come to balance. Very similar problem that we saw last year with Warren Brinson. Mm -hmm. Okay, Something that he has to overcome. Also, a kid from this area has known Elijah since Elijah was like 12 years old. Um, so, yeah, this guy can get after it. Um, plays multiple positions at Savannah Christian. We'll play some shade. We'll play some three-tech for them. I've even seen him spread out. That's just a great peak and wow. shed right there, man. This is textbook. It's what I love. One of the things that I love about this player is not just the ceiling. It's the technique he already plays with. That's what I mean by there. You see the peak, right? Yep. You see him stack him, get his head across, maintain outside contain, and then shed, right? We talked about strike, peak, and shed a couple months back on, on defensive line play. Same exact thing right here. It's a textbook look at what we talk about when we say strike, peak, and shed. Strike, peak, and shed. That's a great job right there from the young football player. Here he is again. You can see, man, not carrying a lot of bad body weight. I mean, you can just look at the, the frame here. He looks really, really thin. He's playing at about 280. He's going to play at 305 in college, I wow. believe. Two, that's 280? Uh, yeah. That looks like 260. It does. He's carrying it really, really well. Yeah. And if you told me he was 268, 272, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think he'll camp this summer at about 280. 
285. Mm. It's the other thing I've heard from Georgia is that you can look at these highlight tapes as much as you want and you can make evaluations on your in-person eval all you want. When they have this kid on campus, they think he's Jalen Carter. You know what I mean? They, 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 think, they think that's what this will ultimately turn into. They think he's going to be that type of football player. And you can see why. Super long, too, man. Yeah. Really, really long arms. Um, and, again, I, I'm more fascinated with the pad level on the young cat and how, how he has the ability to play this low and violent. Oh, God, guard never stood a chance. Yeah, not at all. Sorry. He Ken. shut down the play action and almost had the sack right there. Good hands right there. Good inside or outside rip. Mm-hmm. It's it set up with that outside hand first, though, getting it to the, the shoulder pad. Watch this left hand. He gets this right on the shoulder pad to this down lineman, and that's what sets up right there. Boom. When we get to the top of that shoulder and we can really sink that next rip in, that's what's ultimately going to lead to the success of this play. So I like to see when I'm evaluating great players like this who, look, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, and shit on single A football or private school football because I'm one that came out of it. I'm a product of it. I know it's good football. I know there's great players out here. But there's a level of transition that every high school kid's going to have to make. And the way to shrink that gap is to dominate on a high school field with the technique and the fundamentals that you're going to have to play with and survive with on the college ranks. And that's exactly what we see right there from Elijah. Playing with good hands oh, down as a guy tries to cut he's you. He's trying to cut him now. Yeah, and then get flat down the line of scrimmage. Retracing is a big evaluation point for all defense alignment. How fast can we recognize, oh, it's not here. I need to get there. Also a great get off from the kid. You know what I mean? Quick he saw acceleration. the ball really, really well. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned how he's about a half a yard off the ball, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. And that might be, I mean, it's something they're coaching up because he gets cut a lot or gets double teamed a right. lot or they try to trap him every once in a while. I mean, look how deep he is there. Yeah, he's, he's really, really deep. Playing half a man, though, I like to see that. Watch out as the snap here. Watch Elijah gain ground to his left, okay? What we don't want to do is attack down the midline of this body of this offense alignment. We really want to pick a side, all right, and work a half which is exactly what he does right here. He's going to work the top side shoulder, okay, and he immediately gains ground off the snap to make sure and ensure that he does so, right? We don't want to have to walk through the midline of the body of the offensive lineman. We want to be able to pick an edge and stay on an edge. Great lateral ability from the cat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think the movement pattern, I don't, I don't think I know. I, I, don't, I know that I don't believe the movement patterns to be as smooth and as efficient and as explosive as what we saw from Justice Terry last week. Right. But like I told you, I think that has a lot to do with body composition and where our weight sits currently. Ooh. I mean, he plays violently. So. Super violent. And is a, a really, really quiet-tempered kid. Okay? Not a lot of interviews from this guy. They keep him very, very well protected at Savannah Christian. Um, like I think a lot of these five stars need to be. I think sometimes these kids can get overexposed. I think some of these kids can get uh, a little bit distasteful towards the media by the time they're done. Right. You know what I mean? I felt that, and I think Julian's a great kid. I felt that from Julian this past weekend over at, at, at Carrollton. It's like, man, I'm, I'm sick and tired of doing this shit. Y'all asking me the same five questions. Yep. You know, so this isn't one of those cats. This is a guy that's had the ability to really, really enjoy being the number one player in the country for a long time. He hasn't had to deal with the hubbub that comes from that. Hot take, you're going to see his uh, stock drop as he continues to turn down these interviews, mm. you know. Especially if and when he commits. I don't know what his timetable is. I think he just released the top 12. I'm here to tell you right now, um, I don't think Georgia allows that kid to get out of the state, man. I don't think they can afford for that kid to get out of the state. So, um, my, my sources and Intel tell me he a dog. Uh, it's just a matter of time. It's certainly gets, it's certainly starting to feel like to me that Georgia's about to go on another run at the interior defensive line where it's, there's going to be a couple of years, maybe two or three of them where when the NFL draft rolls around, it's like, you mean to tell me they got two more of these dudes that are coming out? I mean, the classes that they have stacked up over the past couple of years, guys that they already have on campus right now. It seems like Trey Scott's got that room set up to just absolutely blow up again. I saw some NFL mock draft databases that already have Jordan Hall, a first-round draft pick in 2025. Wow. How they know that or how they believe that to be true, I don't, I don't know. 2026, I should say. Yeah, that's probably someone that's just like, hey, yeah, just talking, talking to a source. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts on the line?